funding mistakes, okay? Not knowing the correct data points of the lender, that will get you in trouble. Applying for too many new accounts too quickly. Well, I have a good credit score, yeah, but you just got two new accounts on TransUnion and that's what they pull, denied. You look desperate, denied. They're not going to lend to somebody that looks needy. Nobody wants to go out on a date with a needy person, nobody. <laughs> The same way with banks. Think about dating and banks, dating and banks. You got to look at the same way. Would you lend to you? Would you? The way that you come, I mean, with your credit report, would you lend to yourself? With your credit profile and how it's structured, would you lend to yourself? Ask yourself that question. Would I lend to myself? Would I be a credit risk or would I be a credit asset? Right? So have, not having a good ba banking relationship, if you're always in the negatives, overdrafting all the time, you're not putting money in there, but you're wanting a lot of money, like, bro, who are you? And I, I hate to be so real and raw with you, but like, people need to know that because like, this world doesn't revolve around you. And it doesn't revolve around me, right? Um, non or low usage of a credit card. If you're asking for a credit limit increase, and you're not using the card, you're a risk. Why would they give it to you? They're not making any interest off of you. You're obviously paying your bill on time all the time, and you're not using a high amount where they don't get the transaction fees. So like, why would they give you a credit limit increase? Would you lend to you? You got to ask yourself that. We credit profile. Oh, I got a bunch of AUs. I'm authorized users all over the place, but I don't have many primaries. I'm glad that you're a, a piggy bank, uh, piggy backing pro, uh, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get credit by applying because you have AUs on your account, authorized user accounts. So just remember that, right? A low credit score. I can't, I get that everybody has their own situation. Part of it's financial literacy. We're never taught this. Most of you all know that I was on check systems, had a 500 credit score until the age of 30. I'm 36. I didn't fix my credit till I was 30, right? But I'm, part of me was embarrassed when I like talk about credit because I knew that if anybody pulled my profile, I'd be like ashamed of it. And I'm just being transparent. Your name is everything, right? If, if you want lending, you want these big banks to mess with you, like your name needs to be like gold, right? And if it's not gold, invest to fix it because credit is one of the biggest investments that you can make. Because if you can have credit, now you can leverage your time. Now you can leverage your influence. And now you can leverage your life and create the dream that you want. But credit is what started everything for me. And that's why I'm passionate about it. That's why I teach financial literacy. You know, but the biggest thing is, is you got to keep your name right. No late payments, no charge offs, get rid of them, deal with it, pay for it and, and commit to yourself never to be in that situation again. So funding checklist, let's go over it. Date before you marry, three months before you apply, three months before you give them the ring. Show them that you are an asset to their business, that you're willing to give them money so they can lend out money to other people and make money off of you. So you're partnering with them. Look at yourself as a partner and show them that you're, you're, you're qualified and you're ready to do business. Credit garden, what is that? Credit gardening is when you applied for cards and because, so like, let's say you got two cards that pulled from TransUnion, two cards that pulled from Equifax and two cards that pulled from uh, Experian, right? So you got six cards, right? Well, your age of account is going to be really bad, right? But that's, that's not the biggest thing. The biggest thing is, is, is the too many new accounts within six months. It's the too, many, the too many inquiries. We also don't want to dispute inquiries on open accounts. We only want to dispute inquiries when they're not tied to an open account, okay? So business credit's a different world, right? We can, we can dispute those. But when it comes to disputing inquiries on open accounts, what can have happen is, is they can deem it fraudulent. They can shut you down. You can get blacklisted, all of that, okay? That's a real thing. So the credit gardening is once you get lines of credit or you get credit cards, don't apply for anything else for six months. Let it breathe. Let your profile breathe. Show that there's more on-time payments. You can raise your limits on different cards, things like that, as long as there's soft pulls. But credit gardening is planting the seed and let it grow. Planting the seed and letting it grow, right? Know your data points. Once again, if you, if you don't know what you're after, you're going to lose every time or you're going to get lucky. And I don't like lucky. I like, get, I like getting it right the first time. Know your data points and know exactly what you want. What do you want? Okay. Now let's find the institution. 
I want a $30,000 line of credit. Perfect. Do you want one institution to do that? Or do you want two banks that will give you 15 to equal 30? What would you like? I'd like one bank with 30. Perfect. Google. What is a credit union that will give me $30,000 line of credit? The next thing you know, you got forums coming up, right? All types of things. So being, um, being a researcher and being like quick on your feet is going to be a life skill that takes you so far. Um, and just being, you know, self-resourceful in that area. Consider these are the things debt to income. How much debt do you pay per month versus how much income are you bringing in? Right. They're going to look at immediately. They're going to look at your score. They're going to look at your report and they're going to consider your DTI. How much debt does this person have? How much income are they bringing in? And can they afford more credit? Can they pay for new credit? Or is this person have too high of a DTI? They're automatically getting declined. Okay. That's a big deal, especially when you're trying to buy a home. Utilization. What's your utilization percentage? Remember, keep it under 10%. Three to seven is a sweet spot. Inquiry. How many new inquiries do you have? Inquiries affect you, your approvals for up to six months. They affect your score up to 12 months, and they stay on your report for up to 24 months. Okay? So six months, they affect your approvals. 12 months, they affect your score. They still affect your approvals depending on the bank, but six months is really the sweet spot. One year for it affecting your score, and then two years for until it comes off of your account. New accounts. How many new accounts do you have? If you've got a bunch of new accounts, that's why you, when you apply for credit, you want to do it all at one time. So that way it all hits at one time. So that way the people can't see what you've applied for, what you've got approved for, because it's too early in the game. That's why when you apply for a car, sometimes we'll be like, do you want a couple more? Because it hasn't reported yet. Okay, I'll take a couple more. But here's, here's the deal for all of your uh, car rental uh, gurus out there. Make sure it's on your business credit because that will kill your DTI when it comes to any more credit. Okay. Age of accounts. That's another thing. If you get, if you have 10 credit cards and they're all under one year, you're not, you're going to need trade lines all the time to be able to up your age and you're going to be paying more money. So just be mindful of these things. Good credit score, 720. I mean, I would prefer 740, but hey, you're going to get approved with a 720 or higher, 700 or higher. 680 or higher if you have a good banking relationship at these credit unions, right? Diversify your relationships and bank with many. Remember, back to the whole relationship thing. Your, biz, your banking relationship should not be monogamous. I mean, they should, you should be like, you should be going to all different types of banks and, and banking with all types of banks. Why? Because what happens if a bank or a credit union switches up something in this recession and say, sorry, we're, we're closing lines of credit now. Good luck. Well, you, well, I, I had a 30 thought. Yeah, you should have diversified. Diversifying will keep you safe, right? Um, and so strong profile, once again, mix of accounts, showing diversity on your profile. I can handle personal loans. I can handle auto loans. I can handle home loans. I can handle personal lines of credit, right? I have aged accounts. I've had credit for so long, never missed a payment. High limits. People trust me with $20,000 lines of credit. They trust me with $50,000 lines of credit. The more you can build up your credit resume, which is your credit profile, the more you will get lending at a, at a moment's notice, right? And then I always say 15 primary trade lines are higher, right? And as you keep growing your report, you'll get that. 